so I presume you guys have figured out where we're coming to, hey? <laughs> so, because I can't walk far with my silly right knee, uh, Curtis rented a wheelchair and he's pushing me all the way here <laughs> so that I can only walk short distances and push the wheelchair all along. How long since we've been here last? Yeah, 20 think, years. At least. Yeah. At least, yeah. I agree. In ages. Actually quite excited to see. Yeah, I can't wait. Let's go. We decided to leave um, Strand just before 10 to miss the traffic, but we still caught a fair bit of traffic. Oh yeah, as you'll see when we put it in here, you'll see the bit of traffic we saw. Yeah, here are the prices, so we pay 235 Rand for a day pass, a day ticket. Great stuff. Okay. You can even learn to dive here, I see. Yes. Something I'd like to do one day. I know, I know you'd love that. It's totally different inside here. It's totally different. Oh well, 20 years is a long time. Yeah. It's about time we rediscover the places closer to us. <laughs> got our tickets? Yes, got the tickets. Right, let's go. I think there are only a few minutes until the first penguin feeding. Okay. Hi. Hi there. Good and you? Thank you, ma'am. St still in time for the penguin feed? Uh, just in time. Just, just in, in time. time. <laughs> Where do we go? From? Strand. Strand. Thanks to re-enter. Thank you so very much. So you're going to go through those double doors. Yes. You take a left and it's up the ramp. Oh, Fantastic. It's stamped like we're in the disco Thank now. Thank you. Eh? We will. <laughs> hello, hello. Very nice long way. Let's go to the green screen first. Okay. For, for what is that? So Curtis is posing for a photo in front of the green screen. As everyone knows, I don't do photos. Where did she say we go for the penguins? Thank you. I need to go to check again. Oh, we go down here. Up, yeah. Oh, ah. Oh. Yes. Penguin Gallery, okay. You're going to uh, develop muscles today. <laughs> Let's do this. I'll walk just now. I would have been finished by now. Oh yes. Look at all these bottles. Making oh. like a rib cage. Yes. Oh. Oh. Rather here than in the ocean. Exactly. This is beautiful. Look at this. Fantastic. Eh? Wow, babe. Do you know I remember like ginormous crabs? Do you remember I, I those remember big them stand so high. Yes. I remember. So all four penguins you see, the African penguins and other penguins included, they will all have those black backs, those white bellies and the black band that surrounds the front of the African penguins. You may also know them as another name and they are also called the Jack as penguins. So the reason they were called the Jack as penguins was because of the donkey brain sound that they would make when they would call. So the same way the northern rock of the penguins call is quite distinctive, these penguins sounded very much like that donkey, and so the name just stuck. We will give you an example of sardines, also known as pilchards. So you will see that when the penguin is ready for a fish, they will step up onto the podium in front of Amy's legs and a fish will be presented to them. 
So we like to hand feed our penguins as this allows us to make sure that each penguin has an equal opportunity to eat. And we also want to keep a track record of each penguin's feeding behaviors. So we want to know how much each penguin eats on average so that we will be able to tell when they are eating a bit more or a bit less than usual as this will often indicate a behavioral change. And one of the behavioral changes that can happen is when these penguins will molt. So once a year these penguins will lose their existing feathers, the new coat of feathers coming in will push out the old coat and this leaves them quite vulnerable to the elements. So the feathers are very important to them and therefore the upkeep of those feathers are equally important because without those feathers they won't be able to swim as effectively and they won't be able to hunt after their food. So those northern rock copper penguins are the ones that are currently molting and these guys they just finished molting just before the December period before that summer season started. So Diesel over here, she's taking her fish right to the center of the stage and she's showing you how these penguins eat. So penguins, they don't have any teeth. Instead, they've got bristles which surround the entirety of the mouth and this helps them grip the fish firmly before swallowing at all. You may also see that our penguin keepers will toss some fish into the water and even toss some fish into the air. And this is because each penguin has got their own preferred style of eating. So some of our penguins don't mind to be hand fed, but we do have got others who have got some certain requirements. And that is they like their fish to be tossed into the water so they can swim after it. And some also like to catch the fish into the air. Which one is a female is through a blood test alone. So they don't show any difference physically and the only way to tell for certain to be 100% sure is through the blood test. They are also monogamous, which means they will choose one breeding partner for their whole life and they will share their nest with their breeding partners. Eating material as it did create a nice cool temperature for their eggs during breeding season. But because the guano was harvested as fertilizer and the eggs themselves were removed from the colonies to be consumed as a delicacy, their population numbers tanked. So in the beginning of the 20th century, there were roughly 1.5 million breeding pairs, but by 2021, that number had been severely reduced to 40,000. Luckily, both the acts of guano and egg harvesting have been declared illegal, but they are still facing a number of threats. And one of the greatest threats that they face is food shortages. So the majority of their diet comprises of sardines, but many of us, as a result of the combination of such threats, their population numbers are still rapidly declining. And it is a sad possibility that within 7 to 15 years, these birds could be declared functionally extinct. So these penguins and like many other penguin species live in large social colonies. The ways we can help these penguins is by learning more about them. And the, the campaign on the back window is to have a shot or they'll be able to learn about these penguins and the things that they face. They are currently ill equipped to handle such things and they need our help. Other ways we can help them is by making sure our oceans are a safe habitat for them. So that includes picking up any litter or pollution you may find on our beaches. And you can also make more educated product just to keep the beach nice and clean for our birds. But that will be all for me. I will be signing off. So these are rock of the penguins, yeah. I would love to hear them. If not, the two oceans are Look at that one stands on the stone. No wonder they called rock hopper. I like to stand on top of things. Oh, look at this. They are. This is the kelp forest. It's almost magical. This is what we see wash out on our beach. Exactly. But they've broken up already. Look how long they actually grow. Incredible, eh?
Chiquita's eyes. I know. They kind of look angry with me. <laughs> I'm glad I'm this side of the glass. Just a few minutes before 12 now, so we're waiting for the feeding. In a few short moments, we will be joined by two divers, namely Paul as well as Super City, and they are going to be feeding the sharks in this exhibit. One of them being your spotted cuddy shark, the second being the more elusive pajama cat shark, as well as the smaller leopard cat shark. Hopefully, the Latin 2 will make their way or make their presence now during the feed, once the feeding happens complete. But whilst we are waiting for our doves and to see a pair of fins in the surface, or on the surface at least, but while we're waiting for them to join us, I'm just going to give you a little bit more information about this exhibit. It is our third largest exhibit, and this exhibit picks our waste environment for West Coast Berlin Academy that you'll notice that these beautiful cult fighters or cult uh, species and that is one of many different species of cult around the world and together they form a cult forest. The benefits of it that it provides a nursery or a safe haven for many juvenile animals, not just fish, not just sharks, but many crustacean species as well. Now these panels that you're looking through, just to uh, get you more on the physical side of this exhibit, these are made of acrylic plastic and are around 50 to 16 centimeters thick. The reason for that is to withstand the pressure that 800,000 liters of seawater applies. So yes, all the water that you're looking at comes from the surrounding canals or the harbor. So all the, uh, all the water that we source minus one exhibit in the aquarium, which is our coral leaf exhibit downstairs at the entrance, most of the water will come in through various pipes from the surrounding harbor. However, what do we know about the quality of that water from the harbor? Not exactly the most pristine, right? Many pollutants, many uh, foreign objects as well as organisms are found in that water and therefore to prevent any of those chemicals or organisms affecting the health of our animals, we run the water through a couple of filters. Now those filters similarly to our aquariums at home will clean or purify the water before it is transported into in all the exhibits. I see we've got a bit of commotion. We will be joined very shortly, I see, by our divers. Now, quickly, depths of this exhibit, six meters deep, and the temperature, as I mentioned, this exhibit mimics that of, or mimics the environment rather of our west coast, and then will the temperature does as well. Our temperature in this exhibit will range from 13 to 16 degrees Celsius. So quite a refreshing exhibit. See the seat here right in front of you ladies and gentlemen. And then Paul will be joined. Ah, there we go. We've got Paul on the left hand side. And just on that, those day you can actually purchase. That does allow you entry into the exhibit till 6 p.m. tonight. So there's no need to hang around till then within the aquarium. You can come and go as you see fit until 6 p.m. tonight. And 
lastly, I must mention for anybody interested in diving in our way or having a simply an adventure, we offer a variety of diving courses here at the aquarium which will enable you to enjoy our three main exhibits. Firstly, we've got the DSD, that is a basic diving course that will allow you to dive in the ocean exhibit, the INJ ocean exhibit, which was the exhibit you will see further back with the stingers as well as Nori, our green turtle. For this exhibit, however, as well as our shark exhibit, a minimum of an open water diver's license is required. That and the advanced water, all three are offered right here at the aquarium. If you are over the age of 10, you are welcome to visit our membership office where they will help you with your bookings. So that booking does need to be done 24 hours in advance. But if you're here now, you are welcome to find out when the next availability is. Ah. Uh -huh. My favorite are the ones with the big forests and the zebra fish. <laughs> Did you see the ones with the big forests? Yes, yes. Here's one. I see it, the red one. I'd like to know what they are called. Stompnears. Is that what they are? Yes, it's a red stompnears. Love them. Foundation Shark Exhibit. Yay. Oh! We need to get down there. Yeah, that's for sure. How cool was the feeding at the. Check, there comes the shark. Forest. Oh! This, 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 uh, these are serious vibes, eh? No, no. I love how they command the whole tank. Check how slow he Yeah, swims. slow and looks down at the subjects below. Oh, is this? Would we know if this is a great white? No, this is. I think it's a ragged tooth shark. I'm not sure though. I'm just guessing. Check. There's another one. Yes. I know they don't look it, but that they don't mean to, but they look mean. They do. Save Our Seas Foundation says to protect our oceans, the Save Our Seas Foundation SOSF funds and supports research, conservation and education projects worldwide, focusing primarily on endangered species of sharks, rays and skates, as well as their habitats. They're proud to sponsor the two Ocean Aquarium's main shark display. So let's go down and have a look. Let's have a look.
I'm so glad we decided to come here today. Yes, yeah. and me. But you know, it's sad when yes. one reads that all of us are scared of them. Yes. And they seem to be misunderstood. Sounds like it, eh? The thing is, they're so big, eh? And scary. <laughs> all we hear are scary stories. Yes. What these raggies? Yes. Wow. Raggies? Yes. Oh, you are on first name terms. Yes, yes. <laughs> the sharks don't have a swim bladder like normal fish. They have an oil filled liver. Eh? To keep them buoyant. Yeah. That's right. And that's why they have cartilage because it's lighter than bone. Yes. Look at this one. Oh. How gorgeous. Wow. Look at this one. The colors oh, are incredible. incredible. Yeah. Crazy. So did you hear at the penguin feeding we heard that all the water here is filtered um, seawater from the harbor. Yes. That's incredible. Eh? Look at this fish's nose. Got a long nose. Like a Pinocchio little nose. Yes. I love those green things that live on the rock. Yeah. Not sure what they call. Isn't it kelp? Not kelp. Um, coral? Coral, yeah. So Look at this little fish. Colors are incredible. Insane. I must say that one's my favorite. The Which one with the with the big spots. Oh, okay. Look at that one under the rock here. Yeah. How good is it to see a school group going through here? Oh, hey? it's fantastic. This That's one is my favorite. But he goes through the rocks. He's Shy, he doesn't shy. want to pose. He's, that's why he's my friend. <laughs> he's also camera shy. I don't see mine. Incredible, look at them at the bottom here. Yeah. Yes. Look at this one swimming here. Yeah. Cave dwellers. Check out the starfish. Three against the back wall.
this fish? Yes, it's a yellow box fish. And it looks like a box, eh? It does, eh? It's the coral reef. Fish that are found in coral reefs. Yeah, the colours are insane, eh? We're here at the Western Clown Fish and my darling husband is inside. So cool. Diversity Gallery. Yes. Let's go. It's a wave pool. So these are waves from the ocean? Yes. Okay, give it a go. Oh, you've got very good balance. You're totally fine. Why is the sea salty?
Sniper fish. Maybe he's taking aim. I don't see him. Oh, he has the sniper fish. Look at him. Looks like he's got a barrel sticking out there. Sonia says she's very happy that these escaped the pot. I'm super happy about the rock lobsters, eh? <laughs> they made it. I tell you. So we're going to the jellies. Jelly gallery. I love me Whoa. some jellies. All kinds. This 
so delicate. Ja. Super beautiful, ja. hey? Can you imagine what it looks like down deep in the ocean with these things? We're only getting a little glimpse today. Yes. <laughs> these ones tentacles or what they are are they sting. quite lacy. And they sting, eh? Do they? Yeah. But what about those big ones we see on the beach sometimes that have oh, washed yes. out? They're totally different ones. More comb jellies, yeah. bigger ones. Yes. Upside down jelly. It looks like it. And, and they, they catch just, things with those tentacles that stick into the air. They say these jellies have algae living in their tissues. Okay. They lie upside down so that the algae are exposed to sunlight and can photosynthesize to produce food for the jelly. Wow. These jellies can change color according to their symbiotic algae. How interesting is that? Crazy. Kind of contract, eh? Yes. I never knew about an upside down jelly. Yep. I and J Ocean Exhibit and Tunnel. And we are rather thirsty and hungry. Okay. We just bought ourselves a chocolate brownie and a carrot muffin while we enjoy this.
Devilfish, false time fish, baggy scorpion fish, poisonous or venomous. Incredible. Venomous fish inject a toxin into their prey, while poisonous fish have poisonous flesh or poison glands in their bodies to deter predators. Oh, okay. Teeny ones. Baby barbers. So small. Oh, because the tank is so small. So that's a bellow fish. Cool is there? where the male or female um, little turtles hatch. Really, eh? That's unreal. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Pollution, yeah. Seventeen to eighteen years old. Crazy. Hi, Peter. Hello. So I explained that we were here last twenty years ago, and we saw those huge crabs, crabs yeah. and um, we were looking for it and the sunfish. Mm. So please tell us the stories on both. Okay, the story about the sunfish is quite an interesting one. 
Um, the sunfish is actually not that endangered in Cape Town. We still see them offshore a lot. But that one that they had in captivity was a young one, a smallish one. Yes. And uh, at one stage they thought it's not going to survive. Okay. Um, because it's got a very specific diet and I think um, people were worried that it might just die in captivity with us. So it was taken out and they take out most of the animals that we can actually catch it. We take them back into nature and see if we can replace them with the young. Oh, okay. Okay. They were fascinating animals, yeah. yeah. They yeah. look like a little point. Yes, like a disc, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and if they uh, swim in nature, they actually at one stage turn on their sides to pick up the sun, you know. So that's where it gets... That's where they get the okay. name from. From a sunfish, the Latin name would be Mola Mola, which means the round one, round one. Okay. Twice round. Twice okay. round. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the Those spider crabs, yes. they were a gift from the Emperor of Japan. And they wow. were given about 20 years ago. And um, the idea that we have for this area is that all the stuff that we find here needs to come from South African water. So those fish came from, or those crabs, came all the way from Japan. Okay. And we couldn't well get, give them back to the emperor. No, of course. Think, uh, yeah, so he would have been them. insulted, yes. Yeah, so we had a, a yeah, tank for them and they survived for about 20 years. And most of them just died of old age, so they were very well looked at. Okay. And I think it made a huge impression on the people that were it saw did. them because they were so weird and I think they were kind of scary and the kids ran away. <laughs> they, they were like on stilts but yes. they were also fascinating to us. Yeah, they come from a, like a movie called um, you know, Many Black or something like that. Okay. It was like really <laughs> way out stuff. Yes. So yeah, so the last one died about two years ago. Oh really? Oh, wow. oh. It was a sad thing. You know, I'm sure. If you go back here, you can still see them, how they should I'm be, the lists of how they should be fed. Then. Yes, okay. oh really? Yes, yes. Oh. So it's they were the, part of the family for so long. Part of the family, and I think it was a lot of, you know, a, it was a pretty party. Yeah, yeah I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm having my yes. own little one today. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Thanks, I'm not going to replace them for the reasons I've given. Yes, one yes. is too expensive and the other one doesn't occur. Makes perfect sense. Not, not local. Yeah. Not a local yeah. species. Yeah. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Thank you. Uh, okay, then. Four hundred rand. I'm very taken with this bathroom, so I have to share it with you. The wallpaper is just fantastic. I absolutely... 
absolutely love it. Very clean and neat and tidy. Yep, good to see. So the load shedding is just it. The aquarium isn't immune. That's for sure. <laughs> but it'll be on in a minute, I'm sure. Yep. So this is where we've decided to come and have something slight to eat. So Sonia is having her trusty Coke Zero. Correct. And I am having the Devil's Peak Lager. Can't come here and not have a Devil's Peak Lager. <laughs> <laughs> and for lunch. Yes, what are we having for lunch? I am having the, well, we having the battered fish and chips. And then, what are you having? The Peruvian chicken bowl. Peruvian chicken bowl, yes. Great stuff. This is our lunch for today. This is my battered fish and chips. Can't come here to the harbour and not have battered fish and chips. Exactly. You have to. And this is Sonny's uh, Peruvian chicken bowl fantastic peruvian chicken bowl that's amazing it looks, looks delicious eh? look at that yeah. eh? wow yeah, I look to that. that looks really nice but my fish and chips are not far behind i'm gonna have half of it too i can imagine <laughs> as the seals are playing next door yeah how's that wonderful yeah eh? stunning firstly how was the devil speak or oh, i'll answer that the Devil's Peak Lager is going down well because you just ordered a second one. Second one, yeah, it is. That is stunning. Is it? Enjoying yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, um, like one of those craft beers, you know. Okay. Delicious. You Delicious. deserve it after oh. pushing me around in the wheelchair. No, it's great. <laughs> I'll do it any day. For a lager, I'll do it any time. <laughs> All right. Okay, Let's then. hear about the fish and chips. Let me just try the chips first. You've got like a chunky tartar sauce mm -hmm. by there. Chips are chips, eh? Yes, yeah. slap chips. Mmm, mm, crispy batter. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Very good. Try uh, the next bite with some of that tartar sauce. I'm going to. Chunky tartar sauce, eh? Mm. I prefer it without. Okay. Oh, yeah. Flavor of the fish. Mm -hmm. Listen, this is a random Tuesday in beautiful Cape Town, which has been voted the second best city in the world. Something that like that. I can't remember exactly, but it came second, so that's yes. fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. After New York City. This Table Mountain. Yeah, it's just... I've always loved Cape Town. Yeah. What's not to love? Definitely. Enjoy the rest of your meal. I will. Okay. All right. So, so you can see my beer hasn't gone down much. We've been busy eating. Yes. So. Another sip to cleanse the palate, palate. between courses. Yes. Now what I've done is I've taken over Sonny's dish 
and she's taken over half of mine. Yeah, but let's just, for, for, for fairness, check the little piece of fish I got. <laughs> And he got literally half a bowl, <laughs> if not a little more. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how it goes. I'm still a growing young lad. Oh, so you are? Yes, yes. Oh, no. Check these black beans in here too. Eh? That's very good. Nice and flavorful. Mm -hmm. oh, you yeah. will find a splash of Tabasco here and there. I did get that mouthful. So we're fans of pretty much everything except that um, chunky tartar sauce thing that's not so nice but this is, this is very good but that's spicy as well yeah but i love that i know you do i don't that much but this yeah. is very nice the peruvian chicken bowl that's very really nice yes huh? my oh. first my first stab at uh, peruvian cuisine mm. it's going down well mm -hmm. happiness this is apparently an, a resident little birdie uh, that comes every so often for scraps. The waiters gently wave it away, yeah, like but it comes back every time. A little terrorist, eh? I am so glad that we decided not to take the long road yet. Yeah. Because I'm not ready. Neither am I. And to discover or rediscover the places so close to home again. It's actually quite nice. Right under our noses. Yeah. I mean, the aquarium blew my mind today. It was fantastic. Really. Those little things that the fish, the penguins, the sharks, all of them. Even that one with a nose. It's just like absolutely gorgeous. I it's really enjoyed it. Fascinating. Yeah. And this lobster, or is it a lobster? It's 18 years old. Yes. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I yeah. think they do fantastic work and it's so encouraging to see so many people here on a Tuesday. Exactly. And it's not even school holidays. Yeah. Yeah. And so many tourists from yeah. abroad. No, I love it. Because uh, our country is a Fantastic. wonderful place. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. And we'll see you in the next one.